Welcome to ITTV for Form 5 Physics. The title of this lesson, Sound Waves. In this lesson, we want to have a look at sound waves. We want to have a look at how sound waves are produced, what type of a wave a sound wave is. We want to have a look at how the loudness and the pitch of a sound wave is influenced by the amplitudes and frequency of a particular sound wave. Then we want to have a look at the reflection of sound, sometimes called echo, and work out how echoes or reflection of sound is used in detecting distances and to have a look at fetuses or injuries inside the human body. Let's begin. Sound from the vibration of air. Anklong is a musical instrument made of two bamboo tubes attached to a bamboo frame. The tubes are carved so that they have a resonant pitch when struck. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. Sound waves need a medium of propagation because the wave are actually the vibration of the molecules of the medium. How this sound is produced? Sound waves are produced when a vibrating object pushes and pulls the air particles around it. The diaphragm of the speaker is pushing up. Air above is compressed, causing the compression of air particles. When the diaphragm pulls down, the air layers are pulled apart and causing a rarefraction. In diagram A, the diaphragm of the speaker is pushed forward and the candle flame is pushed away from the speaker. There will be a compression of air near the diaphragm. So let's have a look at this process occurring. So let's draw a speaker up here for ourselves. Like so. At the beginning, let's say that the diaphragm of the speaker moves forward. As we said, as the diaphragm of the speaker moves forward, it causes the air in this area to compress, meaning the air particles in this region here, let's say, will be closely packed to each other. So you get an area of compression. Now, because you get this area of compression, the flame flickers away. In photograph B, the candle flame is stayed vertically upright. The compressed air particles is now pulled back. In photograph C, the candle flame is pulled towards the speaker. There will be a pull and the air particles are moved further apart. A rarefaction occurs. So now let's go to the next part. As the diaphragm moves inwards, these air particles here will be moving away. Not the air particles itself, but this area of compression will move forward. So the next set of air particles over here will get compressed. Let's draw this in. So this area now of compression has moved to this area here. So let's draw that in here. So here, is where we have compression, like so. Now, this area here, the air particles are being pulled apart. So you get an area of rarefaction, where the particles are further apart. Now, what will happen next is, as the wave propagates in this direction, the next set of air particles in this area will get compressed. Conversely, this area, the particles will move further apart and rarefaction is produced. Then this area here will get compression and so on and so forth. So as the wave moves, we'll get alternating areas of rarefaction, compression, rarefaction, compression. 
Please remember, and this is very important, that the particles themselves are not moving anywhere. The particles themselves are just compressing and then spreading apart. Compressing and spreading apart. As the energy moves, it does the same to the next area and then the next consecutive area. So what we see here is that the particles are moving parallel, their displacement that is, is parallel to the direction of wave propagation. Now if you have parallel motion to the direction of wave propagation, this means you get a longitudinal wave being produced. Make a conclusion about the propagation of the sound in air. When the air particles are set to move back and forth, this set the air particles around the cone of the speaker to vibrate. The direction of vibration are parallel to the direction of propagation of the sound. Thus, sound wave is a longitudinal wave. Loudness relates to amplitude. In the diagram, you see a wave produced by a tuning fork. Wave produced by the same tuning fork and vibrating with a higher amplitude, the sound is louder. So here we want to have a look at the relationship between loudness and the amplitude of a wave. Now, when we have this compression and rarefaction areas, it's a bit difficult to study sound because it's very hard to see the amplitude of the sound waves. What we do is we take this sound and we plug it into an oscilloscope which will change our sound wave into a waveform that can be easily studied. What will happen is any area of compression will represent a crest and every area of rarefaction will represent a trove. So we get a nice waveform like this being produced. Understand that your compressions are similar to your crests and your rarefactions are similar to your trove. Now once we have a waveform like this, we can study the relationship between loudness and the amplitude. What we find is this. If I have a wave where I have a small amplitude, the amplitude, which is this area here, let's say is one centimeter. When my amplitude equals one centimeter, I have a sound that is soft. But if I increase the amplitude of the wave and not change its frequency, meaning my amplitude goes up greater like so now let's say my amplitude becomes 2a so if my amplitude now is 2 centimeters my sound becomes louder what we find from this is that amplitude is related directly to loudness if the amplitude increases the loudness increases. So, as amplitude goes up, loudness also goes up. It's very common in examinations to get a graph such as this, where they will draw the first waveform for you, and then they will say, if the sound gets louder, can you please draw the new waveform? Please remember to try and keep the frequencies correct and unchanged. So you're only changing the amplitude. The loudness of the sound increases as the amplitude increases. Bigger amplitude means more energy will be carried by the waves. And if you carry more energy, you get a louder sound. Explain how the pitch relates to frequency. Frequency of a wave refers to how often the particles of the medium vibrate. Sensation of these frequencies are commonly referred to as the pitch of a sound. 
So how does the pitch relate to the frequency? Let's go up to the board again and have a look at this. Let's say that we have a waveform that's produced that has a frequency of one wave, two waves in one second. So we've got a frequency of two hertz. Frequency equals two hertz. Let's say that we have with this a low pitch. Now, if I was to increase the frequency, let's say let's increase the frequency to three waves per second. So instead of this, I would get, we keep the amplitude the same, one wave, two waves, three waves. So now my frequency has become three hertz. Now, because my frequency now is three hertz, what I'm going to get is a higher pitch. So, what can we say from the relationship between the frequency and the pitch? Well, what we can say is that when the frequency increases, the pitch increases at the same time. So frequency, once again, is directly related to the pitch. Higher frequency, higher pitch. Lower frequency, lower pitch. In the diagram, you see a lion and a bird. The roaring of a lion produces a low frequency sound compared to a bird. The lion's roar is low frequency, so the roar has a lower pitch. The tweet of the bird has a higher frequency, thus producing a higher pitch. To investigate whether sound can propagate in a vacuum. Electric bell, glass jar, air being removed by vacuum pump. This is an experiment that we studied in our lower form to also investigate whether sound can propagate in a vacuum. Aim to investigate whether sound can propagate in vacuum. Problem statement. Can sound travel in vacuum? Apparatus, like we said, an electric bell, a bell jar, and a vacuum pump. Procedure. The bell jar is connected to a vacuum pump as shown. The electric bell is connected to a 1.5 AA battery. The electric bell is switched on. Now, the bottom platform is connected to a vacuum pump. Slowly, air is pumped out. The change in the loudness of sound is noted. Observation. The loudness of the sound decreases when the air is drawn out by the vacuum pump. This is because the air particles in the bell jar will reduce and the sound becomes softer. The ringing of the electric bell eventually cannot be heard. This is because there are no more air particles in the bell jar. Conclusion. The propagation of sound requires a medium to propagate and cannot propagate in a vacuum. So it's very important that you understand sound needs a medium, either solid, liquid or gas. Sound travels fastest in a solid because the particles are so close to each other, it is very efficient in transferring the vibration along the medium. Sound travels the slowest in air or gas. Here, because the gas particles are further apart, it is a bit harder to transfer the energy from one particle to the next particle. So remember, sound needs a medium. It cannot travel in a vacuum. Sound travels fastest in solids and slowest in gas. Range of frequencies that can be heard by man and other animals. Ultrasound. The human ear is capable of detecting sound waves ranging between approximately 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. 
Any sound with a frequency below the audible range of hearing, i.e. less than 20 Hz, is known as an infrasound. And any sound with a frequency above the audible range of hearing, i.e. more than 20,000 Hz, is known as an ultrasound. Frequency detected by animals. Dolphins can detect frequency between 50 Hz to 200,000 Hz. Dogs can detect frequency from 50 Hz to 45,000 Hz. Dolphins can send clicking sounds to travel through the water. Once the sound strikes a school of fish, the sound will reflect back to the dolphin. And the dolphin will know where the school of fish are. So the dolphin uses ultrasound for seeking out food. A bat, on the other hand, uses ultrasound for navigation. As the bat is flying, it will shoot out ultrasound. The ultrasound will reflect back off any object that it strikes. This will give the bat information about any obstacles that are in front of it. The bat will quickly do a calculation on distance and then navigate around the obstacles. This is why you notice that when a bat is flying, its flight is very erratic and constantly is changing direction because it is constantly reassessing what is in front of it and navigating based on understanding the reflection of the ultrasound waves. Now, we humans can use these ideas in our way of like detecting fish underwater or detecting the depth of a seabed or in geology looking for petroleum or in the medical field where we want to have a look at the fetus in the womb of a mother or to have a look at injuries sustained when playing sport or any other activity. All we are using is ultrasound and then getting images back that will allow us to understand what we are facing. Application of reflection of sound waves. Ships use sound of very high frequency with short wavelength to detect fishes and the depth of seabed. Now in order to do this, we need to know a formula. A formula that will help us understand the depth or the distance that we are trying to gauge. So let's write this formula up on the board. Let's take the example of a ship trying to detect the depth of the sea. So let's sketch it over here. Let's say that we have a ship. And let's say that over here, this is the depth of the sea. What the ship will do is, it will send out the ultrasound wave, like so, and it will detect it on a special detector that it applies or places at the back of the ship. Now, what do we know? We know that the velocity of sound in water is about 1,500 meters per second. So we know what V is. V we know. We know the time it takes for the wave to travel down and return back. So we know what T is. Finally, what we're looking for is D. D is our unknown. Now, the problem that we have here is, please understand, we're going through our distance twice. We have the value D and then the value D once again. So, if you take all of this, you get a formula very similar to our formula for velocity, which is V equals displacement over time or distance over time. So here, V equals distance over time, but the only difference is our distance goes through a double, which means that we alter the formula and make it V equals 2D over T. And this basically is the formula that we use for 
reflection of sound or your echo. So we use this formula whenever we are trying to calculate something that is related to reflection. With a shorter wavelength, the sound is reflected back from smaller objects and so the echo can be timed and the distance to the object can be calculated. Exercise Sonar is a sound wave that reflects off the bottom. The drawing shows a ship sending sonar to the bottom of the sea. The reflected sound is detected by the ship. The speed of sound in the fresh water is 1,500 meters per second and is 1,600 meters per second in salt water. Show how sonar can be used to determine the depth of water. So once again here we're just using this formula over here. Like we said, we know what the velocity is and we know the time it took for the wave to reflect back. What we want to find is D. So as long as we have all the other values for V and D, D is easily obtained. Let the depth of the C be D meter. The time taken by the sonar traveled from the transmitter to the receiver BT. The depth D equals V 1600 times half times T. Medical field. A doctor is scanning a fetus using ultrasound scanner. Ultrasonic echoes are also used in the medical field to view the internal organs such as the heart or a newly formed fetus. An ultrasonic transmitter receiver sending ultrasound waves across a human body and the ultrasound reflected will build an image on a monitor screen. Oil and mineral exploration Geologists using echo sounding to find oil and minerals from the ground rocks. They can detect sound reflected from the ground and can track down the pattern of the sound travel through different kinds of rocks and magma. Let's try a question. What are the meaning of pitch and loudness of sound? So remember we had a look at pitch and loudness over here earlier. Loudness is related to amplitude and pitch is related to frequency. The question is asking you what is the meaning of pitch and loudness of sound? Write out an answer. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. Answer. Sound with high pitch will have high frequency. A loud sound will have a big amplitude in the wave produced. So remember, pitch is related to frequency. High pitch, high frequency. Loudness is related to amplitude. Louder sound, bigger or greater amplitude. A guitarist played his guitar at Fort Famosa, Malacca. A guitar string vibrating at 500 Hz. What will be the frequency of air particles in the room? At what frequency do we hear the music produced by the guitarist? So if the string is vibrating at 500 Hertz which is 500 waves per second what will be the frequency of the air particles in front of the string so let's imagine that we don't have a speaker here but we have the guitar string now the guitar string is vibrating at 500 Hertz the air particles will be vibrating at should be the same frequency correct and at what frequency would you be hearing it so, as it travels through the air and reaches our ear, what is the frequency of the sound that reaches our ear? Have you written down this answer? Let's have a look at it. Answer. Air particles in the room will vibrate at the same frequency of 500 Hertz, which carries a sound signal to the ear of a listener, which is detected as a 500 Hertz sound wave. Summary. Sound produces from the vibration of particles. Sound needs a medium to propagate. Loudness depends on the amplitude of sound. Pitch depends on the frequency of sound. Applications of ultrasound. And remember the formula we use to detect distances. V equals 2D over T. 
That's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.